This is episode number 26 and today I'm talking about how your mind is your secret weapon. Welcome along to the DressageRiderTraining.com podcast. I'm Nicholas Smith and in each episode I'll bring you an educational or inspiring message to help you unlock your true potential as a dressage athlete. Are you ready? Let's get into it. We can enter a competition and we can worry about who's in our class, what the judges will give us, we will place, and what our horses will do. We can worry about all of these things, and I mentioned this in the last podcast. All of these things we can have no control over and let our ner- nerves get the better of us. Then when we go trot down the centre line, we can't even remember whether we turn left or right because we've been so worried about all these million things we have no control over. We've been so wrapped up in things out of sight of our control that we've lost control of the things that we can control. Before I started working on my mindset, I had no tools, no tactics, no weapons to combat a vulnerable or scattered mind. Over time though, I've become extremely passionate about this and I've learned how to improve my mindset and I've become obsessed with how our minds influence our performance and our everyday life. It doesn't matter whether you're a competitive writer, you're writing purely on the weekends, or you're simply wanting to improve your overall life and achieve other goals, whether it's personal or professional. It's about making sure that you have a competitive advantage with your mindset, because your mindset is your secret weapon to life. Because competition isn't just part of everyday life. We're constantly competing in all parts of our life. We compete for better jobs. We compete to be better at school. We compete to be front line of the coffee shop. So if we want to win at life and unlock our competitive advantage, we've got to learn to optimise our mindset and become mind fit as well as physically fit because there's constantly things pulling our mindset away from what we're wanting to achieve. Now I get it, sometimes it's not about competing and many of my listeners aren't wanting to compete. However, you may have heard me mention the saying, be 1% better each day. In order to chase your goals and have a sense of purpose each day, which, by the way, is the key to happiness, there is an element of competition that I'm talking about. It may or may not be in the competition arena. It just may be with yourself and turning up to be better each day. Say your goal is to be saving more money, to have more money put aside, This competition mindset is about fighting that inner dialogue that's telling you to spend more money. It's making sure that you're staying on track towards your short-term or long-term goals. All of this doesn't just apply to the competition arena. It's applying to all of the competition and all the ways your mind influences your results. It's not about a sense of mental toughness. You don't have to be tough but what it is about is willpower. While mental toughness can be great, and it is important, and a sense of grit can help you push through, both of these strategies are more about the defense. The defense. A mentally fit athlete and a mentally fit person is more about the offense. It's about advantages in winning. It's the shield, not the spear. Often what happens when it comes to mindset is the wrong strategies are used. You see, being competitive in in this sense doesn't come from harder training sessions or being the rider that runs those extra sprints after doing the schooling of their horses. It's not about Olympic lifts or doing the splits. That's physical dominance, and in dressage it certainly isn't about physical dominance by any means. Fitness for dressage is about health and longevity and ensuring you have good posture to prevent wear and tear and you have the coordination and the stability to be able to ride at your best. Mental fitness is also about preventing wear and tear, having the ability to stay focused and calm when stress is placed upon you mentally, having the ability to stay centred and balanced when stress is placed upon you. Rider wellness is therefore about both physical and mental fitness, preparation 
and prevention, working in offence, not defence. Getting started boils down to two fundamental tactics. That's it. If you understand these two fundamental principles, you're on your way to becoming mentally fit and unstoppable in life and in the arena. First, set your sights. First tactic is to simply set your sights. What is it that you're striving for and recognise what it is you can control and what it is you can't. Start to write a list of all the thousands of thoughts and ideas that can distract or tempt your focus. Often when we complete, compete ideas and thoughts flood through our mind and we go into overdrive. When we enter that arena, all sorts of obstacles can come flooding through your mind. Everything from social media to what other riders might be doing for their training, how to deal with bad weather, bad judging, and dozens and dozens more, including just trying to get to the event. Is the vehicle going to break down? Is my horse going to load? Often the list can be extremely overwhelming and easily get trapped and stuck within it. However, camouflaged inside this massive list is a much smaller one. Inside this list are some key elements like training, recovery, nutrition, sleep, and your mindset. This is where you should set your sights. Only these things you can control, you can influence, and that you can change. Nothing else. It's these areas where you want to give your full attention, energy, and effort. Giving any attention to anything outside of your control And try as we may, we can't change or influence those things. So we must learn to view these things as distractions that need to be ignored. And this is something that, luckily, you can practice every single day. And it's not something that, by practicing for one week, you will have it and you have it mastered. The more and more you practice it, the better and better you get, but the more... You put yourself into situations that stretch your comfort zone, the more you have to tune and fine-tune this even more. Having the ability to focus on your mindset is understanding this principle. Recognise what you can control and what you can't. Now, it does sound ridiculously simple and feels like you shouldn't spend a lot of time on it, but the truth is it is simple, yet we struggle with this every day. But you can practice this every single day. The great thing about this part of mindset is you have endless opportunities to work on setting your sights and remaining focused. If your goal is to be saving for maybe it's a new horse, a property, maybe putting money into um, a savings account, purchasing something you've been dreaming of, your first float, a vehicle, setting your sights on that and staying focused or remain on st- and remaining to stay focused on that for however long it is that's going to take you to do that is a constant opportunity for you to train your mindset focus on what you can control and what you can't next time you have a co-worker that might have been promoted ahead of you try not to get hot bothered and stressed about it because this is something you can't control. Instead, double down and commit to being the hardest worker in the room. Be the first to the office, last to leave every day and commit to your work effort. If your three-year-old spills juice on the breakfast table and you have a big presentation and your clothes get ruined, don't get upset about it. You can't control what's happened. It's now in the past. Instead, calmly console the toddler, go upstairs and change your pants. If you have a flat tyre and you have to pull over on the side of the road with or without a horse float, try not to get wrapped up into what has just happened. Simply change the tyre, carry on where you left off. If you worry about being at destinations on time, if you're heading towards a competition and you worry about getting there, allow yourself plenty of time to get there. Factor in roadworks, factor in loading of your horse. Whenever I head to a clinic or competition, I allow lots of time because I stress when anything involving time is an issue. And so I factor that in. Say my horse doesn't want to load, I will factor in half an hour of loading time. I'll factor in half an hour of roadworks and I'll factor in half an hour of something else going wrong because I'd rather be at the destination with that time to spare than frantically being on the road not being able to control what may be coming up and so I like to be in control of what I can control. 
In light of the current situation in the world with COVID-19, focus on what you can control. Practice social distancing, wash your hands and build your wellness and boost your immunity. We're all frantically climbing the ladders of our career, chasing writing goals, working hard day in and day out, and this will never change. And if we don't first listen to, don't first learn to simply set our sights on what we can control, those ladders can turn into escalators going the wrong direction. We can constantly get pulled in all sorts of things and head off on the next shiny direction and we get stuck on the treadmill of life, depressed because we aren't going anywhere, we're not able to achieve what we're wanting to achieve and, and we get frustrated with every man and his dog for everything because that's simply out of our control. And we let our emotions override us because we're focusing on other things and we're letting ourselves to get distracted. Not to mention scared and overwhelmed. Life is frantic in today's modern world. We're working hard and yes we're busier than ever. Too often though we aren't moving forward or even going anywhere. So let's learn to set our sights and begin to control your mind by focusing on what you can control. So the second thing to help you make your mind a secret weapon is to kill the critic. We all have that voice and it shapes our realities more than most of us realise. Our thoughts become our words, our words become our actions, and our actions just, just dictate our destiny. The key here is to watch your thoughts and your words. You need to take ownership of this. No one will coach you more or critique you more than that voice that's inside your head. We can take ownership of this by asking yourself a few questions. If something is bothering you, ask yourself, is this something I can do about it? And if the answer is yes, well, don't complain, just get busy and fix it. Get to work and do something about it. On the flip side, if you ask yourself, is something bothering you, and the answer is no, then don't complain, it's outside of your control, and let it go. You see, if it's outside your control, there is nothing you can do about it, and no amount of unproductive complaining is going to change the fact. You've heard me say this before, never whine, never complain, never make excuses, because the more we do this, the more we attract this. So kill the critic in your head by starting controlling your mindset. Start to think about what you're doing to fuel your mind, who you're listening to and what you're focusing on. The key is to choose to focus on what you could control, not all the millions of things that could go wrong or what so-and-so is saying on the sideline or on social media. I challenge you to set your sights and use every opportunity you see every day as an opportunity to strengthen your mindset and to stay on task. Kill the critic in your head and start to take control of your mindset. Start to think about the food that you're fueling your mind. And if you do this and you take control of these two elements of setting your sights and killing the critic and a critic, you'll be ready to be able to do anything. You'll be ready to, be able to achieve anything and you'll be ready to be able to do anything that you've dreamed of. Chase those goals work hard and take control of it. That's it for this episode. If you found it helpful, make sure you download my free guide at dressagewritertraining.com. It will help you get started on your journey to becoming the best writer you can be. If you know others who might like the show, please do share this with them. My goal is to help others enjoy their riding even more by taking care of themselves as much as they do their horses. And finally, if you have time to give this podcast a review, it would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode.